Hello guys, this is Pavel Oskorop with you again. This is video number 14 in creating learning management system with Laravel. Uh, finally, we do have all the main things like courses, lessons, tests. We can buy the course, we can participate in the course. And now it's time to polish it, to take care of the small details here and there that makes makes our app more, uh, more uh, compelling, let's put it this way. So first I want to uh, take the home page and divide it into two things. So if I'm logged in, I want to see my courses and other courses. So easily access my courses. Home controller, list of courses. Um, right. If of check courses. Just courses equals no. But if I'm logged in, I get the course. Where has I think um, students function. Query, query where student ID equals auth ID. Send here order by ID standing. We get. I think we forgot something right here. Thank you, PHP Storm. Uh, purchased courses and we go purchased courses here and in the, in the index index blade is called in the index we go let's put it a little closer here um, if there's not no purchased courses H3 my courses and then do basically the same thing and just don't put the price and we'll remove some tags purchase courses right course price we don't need that uh, course description and we don't need ratings because it's my course. Actually, we're doing progress here, but we'll take care of that later. Uh, ratings, progress, to be decided. Okay, let's check if everything's working. I think there's a typo here. And in our controller, right, I think upgrade the relationship wrong, so this should be here. And let's Let's follow with that. Uh, let's go to the browser and see if it actually works. It does work, but it doesn't format it really well. So after my courses, let's put the line here. And let's see if it's actually... Oh, right, of course. My courses. Well, I'm just putting the columns here but it should be a separate row in the strip. Yeah, and we have my courses now uh, and separately other courses, but we need to check if those courses uh, are not in the same list. Well, actually, let's leave it this way for now. So other courses. Um, if not is no. All courses, other courses. No, actually, let's leave it this way. All courses. H3, all courses. And then again, row. And then columns. 
some bootstrap cleanup here. What? My courses and all courses? No. Well, here. It's, it should be before for each. Outside of for each, and then back to here. All courses, and we are good. Next thing I want to take care of is that progress to be decided. That's what you added here. So what is progress actually if you opened a lesson or not? I won't get too deep if you actually read the lesson or not, but uh, if I go to here and if I click any lesson, I should be able to save the progress. Uh, like The database should be uh, saving whether I'm opening the lessons or not. So for that, we do a separate table a separate uh, migration, create lesson, lesson student. It will be a pivot table. I'm not sure if you hear that, there's a music in the background in some other office here. Uh, lesson student table, okay. be a pivot table so I can copy easily that from here so lesson student we don't need ID but we do need lesson ID lesson ID lessons and user ID right and also we need timestamps actually when the the page was visited when the lesson was clicked and we drop if exists lesson student okay we migrate okay all good and now in lesson uh, we go and add belongs to many relationship so public function Function less uh, students and return this belongs to many user. Yeah, this and then uh, same goes with user here. We will have lessons. And now in any lesson controller, so when I'm visiting this lesson, uh, I need to save the lesson controller, I think it is, show the lesson, and if I'm checked, actually it should be check, oh, check, uh, lesson, Students should be attach student ID. Right. I refresh the page. Is there any error? Yes, there is. Lesson user does not exist. All right. Of course, by defining the relationship, I should put in lesson user here because uh, it's not lesson student. Are mixing a little so it's not lesson user, the relationship is to user, but the table name is lesson student, right? So, no more error. And let's see if our database contains the records. Refresh the table list lesson user created, of course. I need timestamps, that's also the thing I forgot with timestamps. Refresh the page again. And timestamps are okay. So now we have information who visited which lesson. Now let's get back to our home page and actually show that data. So instead of TPD, let's go and show. So the progress will be, actually let's put it in a paragraph. So the progress will be X lessons of 
total lesson count. So course lessons count. Um, and let's put with lessons here. So course with lessons so to avoid too many queries. Um, okay, and let's get back lessons count. Let's Okay, we have x of 10 lessons. Now, how do we count x? Um, let's try it. User lessons where course ID equals course ID count. Oh, again, same thing, uh, lesson user. I need to specify table lesson user, lesson student. Okay. Great, so I've, my progress, I've visited two lessons out of 10, which is actually not true because I've visited one of them twice. So let's change that logic a little and, um, and log a little differently. So if we go to lessons controller, uh, this thing we would need to check. Or actually, let's put the sync here. Lesson students sync. No, that would be actually also wrong. Uh, attach. What was the function that? Okay. If lesson students where id equals of id um, count equals zero only then we attach no, I'm doing something wrong like this right 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 should be okay let's visit the lesson once again and let's see if our count is still at two. And do you have any new rows here? No, we don't have that. So if we get back here, we see two. But if we visit another lesson, I guess it should be three. Okay, another lesson and the progress should be three. Yay. So now we have progress of how many lessons I've actually visited. And final thing for today, let's take care of these bottom things. So reviews and uh, stars. Instead of reviews, I'll probably show the amount of students here. So let's go to our home, no, it's index blade, and let's just uh, put course students amount, oh no, count, sorry, count students, should probably be zero or one. So one students or zero. Um, I think there is a Laravel function that uh, takes care of the plural things, but again, it's outside of this um, course. So let's put it this way: students equals one. Okay, now ratings. How do we take care of that? So we go to the course. And if I'm logged in, I should see the form here to, to rate the course. Uh, we go to course blade. And if I'm logged in and if um, I have bought the course, course description, right here. If I'm logged in and and have a course bought. Right. We will refactor some of the parts of that a little later, but now let's put it this way. So form for now, I think action post um, rate the course. And for now, let's put it just just uh, simple radio buttons. I don't want to play with JavaScript or with those stars. Uh, value one, uh, 
name meeting. And actually, let's make it even more sim simple. Select name rating option value one one two three four five two three four five Let's put four as default. Uh, no, then default tab submit rate. Um, all four. Mm, that's good. Three is average. Quite good. And then Awesome. Uh, right, rate the course. Probably there should be a space here. Let's refresh. Right, so we do have this. Let's put that within lines here to look to make it look more separate. Right, rate the course. Rate the course. And for that we need a table, right? We need a table of course ratings. Um, I'm thinking whether it's many to many or should it be a separate kind of a table? I guess it's many to many. Actually, not even that. We do have already the, the table. So course student, why don't we add a field here in course student? Mm, but then we would need to refresh. I don't know if necessary. Okay, let's add another migration. Make migration add rating to course student table. Okay. From what I remember, the syntax is in the table, course student, and then we add integer rating, unsigned, default to zero. And then probably after, after some field, after user ID. After user ID. Okay, and wait. Also need the down migration here, so we copy that here and we drop drop column user ID. Not that user ID, sorry, rating. And let's migrate. So we have a rating field now, it should probably be zero. Okay, and we need to uh, add that field into our relationship. So course HP uh, students belongs to many with timestamps and with pivot, I think it's called. Yes, with pivot uh, rating. Right. Uh, and uh, in our course, we have form to Let's put it out courses rating with the same course slug, I think. Um, and in our routes, we get courses slug rating, rating, actually, rate, not rating, uh, courses rating. Uh, and it should be post. And it should be a method called rating. Mm, something like that. So there should be payment and request. So rating and request. Um, request find a fail where. Mm, now I should probably change it here to course. ID and then of course ID here because we don't really need slug in that URL. 
uh, course ID rating. Um, okay, and here course ID. What else we need to care to take care of? Okay, find the update existing pivot. Student ID is this one, and then rating should be request get rating. And we redirect back with success message. Thank you for rating. Okay, should be okay. Let's refresh that one. Let's rate. Of course, every form needs to have. I keep forgetting that CSF field. Okay. And we're redirected back. That means good thing. Yes, rating is four. Now let's actually show the rating. Uh, for now, we just create like this field would exist course rating. Um, and then we'll create that. So, course rating will be uh, an attribute here in the model of rate, of course. Public function get rating attribute. And how will we calculate that? We will just query the database like that. We don't need any extra model here. Course student, where course ID equals this attribute think ID average rating. I think we're good, and let's refresh the page. MDB not found, of course, and slash here. And we have a rating for, let's round that to two, I think. No, it's not that. Uh, it's mm, number format. Come on, remember. Number format. Yeah, four. Um, where is it? This is great. Waiting for out of five or this. And the final thing that we need to do here is on our home page uh, replace those stars with actual ratings. So let's do that. Um, and our index blade. Glyphicon star. I don't remember what is the glyphicon for like active star. Let's Google that. If you can star active or something. Totally removing, redirecting, star, star, star empty, and that's the star and there's star empty. Empty. Let's check how it, how different the look is. All oh, right, so it is okay. Um, so for star uh, equals one to five. If course rating is bigger or equal star, then we have this, else we have empty. 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 What is the error syntax and if what? Oh, for each. And for and for. Mm -hmm. 
and we're good we have four stars here and none stars in any other lessons so I guess that was the longest lesson the longest video of the series uh, but it was worth it I hope and uh, in the last lesson of this series before I put it on github next week we will do some refactoring clean up and uh, make code look more beautiful so see you in the next video and see you uh, on github with uh, with the code available